Yeah, this is, this is not gonna work out. All right, that's better. Hey you guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. And today I'm gonna be telling you about four must have wildlife photography accessories for your wildlife photography. I made a video kind of like this before on the best budget friendly wildlife photography accessories um, that there are out there. But this one's a little bit different. This is about four that I would never go out in the field without. I have these virtually literally every time I go out. And while obviously the camera and some of the other key aspects of the things like the lens or maybe if you're a tripod, shooter or stuff like that are obviously essential. These are the things that are accessories to wildlife photography that I would consider essential every time I take out. So no, I won't be talking about this today, but if you guys want it, I'll throw a link in the description below as well if you guys want to check it out. It's most useful, obviously, if you have a whole ghillie suit to go with it, stuff like that. But um, yeah, pretty cool uh, little thing. But the first um, accessory I actually want to talk about is this camo scarf here, kind of going along with the camo theme, right? And the reason why I'm saying that this is a must have, and I literally take this out every time, it's in my backpack in case I need it, is because it, I, I'm not taking out a ghillie suit every time I go do wildlife photography. I think that being able to camouflage is something I find really valuable in wildlife photography, yet I find that only about maybe 30% of the time I get dressed up in camo and actually do that because I feel like the species requires it or the location requires it. But for the situations where I don't have that all packed with me and I need it really randomly kind of on the run, at least I have this camo scarf. Super cheap, $10, $12 on Amazon. I'll throw an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And um, yeah, just really valuable in a pinch. It's really big, so I'll stretch it out for you guys. As you can tell, it kind of covers <laughs> pretty much the whole screen. Oh, that is... Yep, that's the camouflage side. Um, so all that to say, it's huge. So it can cover a lot of space. So while it's not gonna be perfect, let's say you find maybe a nest or something that you're looking at now that it's spring, it's nesting season, and you wanna be able to get kind of close and um, without disturbing them as the parents maybe come back and forth from the nest. And so what you can do is maybe find a spot where most of your body is concealed by a bush or something like that, or you're laying prone, and you can just throw this over the rest of you, and it's gonna keep you relatively concealed. So for me, this is my camera in a pinch that I never leave the house without if I don't want to pack a ghillie suit and all of that other stuff. So absolutely great accessory and make sure to check it out in the link below. Next, I want to show you guys, second up, the Manfrotto Pixie Evo 2. Now, I've talked about the Manfrotto Pixie Mini before, um, and it's about a $20 little tripod, $25 little tripod that's awesome. This is the second version of it, basically. It's the Evo 2, and this one is the other one. The other one's a little bit more budget friendly. This one's $50, this one's $25, but it's got every single feature you could possibly think of in a mini tripod on it. So I absolutely love this mini tripod. I think it is the greatest mini tripod you will probably ever find out there. <laughs> so great little thing. The reasons why I say what I say about it is first of all, one of the most annoying and difficult things about tripods sometimes can be, or those mini tripods, is having to screw it, right? So you, you take the thing and you screw it on it or you screw this thing into it. But what I really like about this is it has a little um, rotating wheel here that you can just screw it onto the camera where you're mounting it. it. Does a great job. Also, if you're a vlogger and you do wildlife photography vlogs, this is a great tool as well. This is super convenient, easy to use, rather than having to twist it around. I think that convenience feature is worth a lot in and of itself, but there's even more valuable things about this. Second of all, while the Manfrotto Pixie is pretty strong already, this uh, ball head tripod is incredibly strong for um, for the price, like for being a mini tripod and for the price, it is incredibly strong. It holds up the weight of my camera lens and my camera body attached. It's pretty, pretty dang incredible. All you do is you just loosen it right here, tighten it back up, whatever position you're in, and it's very firm. You know, I can put a lot of pressure on it in any direction, it's not moving whatsoever. So great ball head, great quality right there. Now diving into two other things that are really thoughtful and valuable and insightful that they created along with this tripod is first of all this. It has a knob that goes back and forth on the mini tripod and it allows you to go between a more, um, I guess like a vertical mode versus if I switch to the other mode, I'm gonna go to now where it's flatter and see how flat it gets there. Now it's incredibly flat. So let me show you off to the side over here. You can see it's flatter. And then if I raise it up to the other mode, 
then now it's got a little bit more height. So what I think is really helpful about this in wildlife photography specifically, is if you wanna you know, be able to be a little bit more comfortable, maybe if you're laying in prone on the ground, you can use it in this position. But if you wanna get it really incredibly close to the ground, you can throw it all the way as low as possible and your, your camera is almost as low as you get. Um, so I think this is an awesome feature. It sits right above a lot of times the grass, maybe that you're on or whatever it may be. You're gonna get some really beautiful clean shots with this. And like I said, because the ball head is strong enough, it does a great job of being able to hold up that weight in that camera lens setup. Now, beyond this, the last feature that I think is super clever about it is it actually has these little um, knobs here, which can then pull out and extend the tripod even more. And so now you've got even extra stability if you need it. And if you want um, maybe more height, let's say, then you just fold it in, go to that other knob, and now you've got extra height on top of what you had before. So super versatile, super portable um, mini tripod. And I think it's just a great intuitive, nice mini tripod just to be able to take out in the field. And the thing is, it's so tiny. So I literally just slide it in my camera pocket um, on the side of my camera backpack where like the water bottle pocket is and I'll just throw it in there. And if I ever am in a pinch and I need more stability and I'm on the ground and I'm waiting around for a while, something like that, just throw this out and I'm uh, ready to roll. Now next, I wanna show you guys this thing. So kind of going along with the camo theme, this is a camo balaclava. And um, the reason why I'm showing this thing specifically is, yes, it does offer you a little bit more camouflage, but the main thing that I love about this is it keeps you so warm. <laughs> and I know in my area where I do wildlife photography, if I go out at sunrise, pre-sunrise, it is stinking cold in the winters, falls, springs, stuff like that. Till it gets to summer, then it's very manageable. But especially winter time, it is just freezing. And I did not realize how much heat escapes from just your head alone. You know, you always hear that like 50% or something or of your body heat escapes through your head and your toes or you hear something like that, right? But it is true. When I take this thing out in the field and if it's a really cold morning and I throw this on, I immediately notice a difference. Um, really great, $20 that I spent on it. It's camouflage, so if you're using a camo suit, a ghillie suit, something like that, it'll camouflage, blend in with it great. And so I think this is a solid um, piece right here. I'll throw it on just so you guys can check it out really quick, see what it looks like. There we are. So the nice thing about this balaclava as well is that either you have the hood that will come over like this and you can tuck this under or whatever you're doing, but then you can also just let this off if you want your hair to be out or whatever it may be. Or like me, I always throw a cap on over it um, in most situations. So great balaclava, looks really nice as well. And I mean, heck with COVID, free mask. I mean, you're going to pay $10, $5 for a mask anyways. Might as well invest in something you're actually going to use beyond just <laughs> COVID time. So anyways, check it out in the description below. With that being said, before we move on to the last accessory, if you guys want me to make a video on my camo uh, that I use, my camo um, accessories and my camo suits and all that stuff that I use, let me know in the comments below and I'd love to make a video for you guys on that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. That way you can make sure to check out new videos as I release them, including if I wind up doing a camo video. Um, but yeah, I know that sometimes people give me questions about that. So if there's a lot of you guys that wanna see that, I'd be more than happy to put together a video kind of showing um, just my camo setup and how I camo camouflage in wildlife photography. So the last accessory, while it's one of the cheapest, it is by far the most valuable to me. Like I never leave anything, you know, my video job that I do or wildlife photography, I never leave without this thing. And that is an air blaster. And <laughs> as simple as that seems, this thing is a lifesaver. In photography, you can get around not having an air blaster. If there's a, a couple spots of dust on the lens, usually you can find a way to pretty cleanly in Lightroom or Photoshop just remove the dust spots, right? But in video work, if you ever wanted to take video of birds or video of rabbits, whatever it may be, any type of wildlife, it is incredibly difficult to remove dust in um, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, whatever you may use. So this thing is absolutely a lifesaver if there is dust spots on the lens, hair on the lens, anything like that. And the reason why I like this one specifically is that two reasons. First of all, it is very strong compared to any other dust blower that I've ever had. Has a lot of power just for being able to, I don't know, be this tiny little thing. Very sturdy, very durable, like it's uh, solid plastic, so it's not gonna, solid rubber, I should say. That way it's not gonna break or anything like that. But then also it has like a little filter in the back, which filters out the dust as it kind of shoots um, through the side. So you're not shooting dust back out into the lens. So great little tool, can't recommend it enough. And this is literally an essential for me when I'm doing any type of shoot that I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed today 
today's video. If you guys wanna check out the other wildlife photography accessories video that I have, I'll throw it in the end screen right now. And um, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you subscribe below so you can see more content like this where I share stuff that I do, be inspired, come out in nature with me on my vlogs, and I'd love to show you guys around my channel more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.